cheese puns and it's gay. <laughs> Hi, welcome to a video. This, I mean, this is gonna be a nightmare for me to edit, but I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for all of the people who want to read new releases in 2021, which let's be real, it's all of us. We love new releases and there are so many queer books coming out in 2021. I'm gonna do my best. I have a massive list that just keeps growing. I will link the Goodreads list down below and feel free to look through that and add whatever you want to your own Goodreads uh, TBR. But it was a lot of work so I would really appreciate that you stick around for the whole video and give me that watched time because I am only like 600 hours away or something from getting monetized and that would be the absolute bees let's get into these fucking books i'm gonna scoot um, to i'm gonna scoot to this side so i can put thumbnails here or covers here some of these books don't have covers yet only like three of them i think only a couple of them maybe one is a sequel and I tried to keep it uh, not sequels. I might go back and add them to the list, but just for this video, these are either going to be standalones or first in the series. Uh, just, you know, that's just like what I read for the most part. Although the sequel that I know that I have on here that I added is one that I am very excited for. I have 65 on this list. It's going to be a monstrous video, but I'm going to try to talk about each one quickly uh and of course if you want more information on it you can look at the goodreads but i want to give you just a little bit of an idea for each one i'm already parched and you can just like listen to this while you're you know doing other shit and then if one like sticks out then you can go and uh write it down or add it to your list or whatever so here we go let's get started first one is meet cute diary by emma Emery Lee. This is a contemporary YA romance that's a male-male romance, but one of them is trans, and it says Felix Ever After meets Becky Al Albertalli in this swoon-worthy, heartfelt rom-com about how a transgender teen's first love challenges ide his ideas about perfect relationships. My doctor scared the shit out of me. Next is A Song for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This is going to be a first in the se a series called Monk and Robot. It doesn't explicitly say that this is a uh, queer or LGBTQ+, but from what I know, having read uh, almost everything Becky Chambers has written, is that it's always going to be queer. It will be queer. Then we have The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo. Nevo wrote The Empress of Salt and Fortune, which the second book to that uh when the tiger comes down or something what's it called when the tiger came down the mountain this book takes place in the 1920s it's about a girl named jordan baker who is queer asian adopted and treated as an exotic attraction by her peers while most the most important doors remain closed to her then we have the world ends here by rory power there is not a description for this yet will be her third book it's again gonna be YA kind of in that mystery thriller horror genre and it is categorized in the LGBTQ genre and everything we know about Rory Power and her books again is that they will be queer. Next we have the Raven in the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. They wrote Beyond the Black Door I think in 2019 that was released and this is a young adult fantasy. I know that there is rep for polyamory. I think the main character is Ace. There's magic, there's power, there's intrigue, there's a rebellious princess. Excellent. Uh, next is one of my most highly anticipated on this list, I think. And this is The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bou... Bouye? Bou... Bouye? Angeline is a, an 
indigenous author. She is of Chippewa Indians and is a storyteller who writes about her Ojibwe community in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. So that's wonderful. We have Own Voices Indigenous Rep. This is also a young adult contemporary mystery thriller. And we have a biracial, unenrolled tribal member and the product of a scandal who never quite fit in with her hometown or on the reservation. And I'm not sure where specifically the queer rep is, but I have heard that there is queer rep. <laughs> so there you go. Because we have Bruised and I'm obsessed with this cover. It's fantastic. It's also that you're gonna notice a theme in this video so many young adult queer releases in 2021 are like this pastel pink blue and purple color scheme and i am so fucking here for it i fucking love it anyway this says this is by tanya ba Bodeju? 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 this is a young adult contemporary and it says whip it meets we are okay i mean do you need anything else it says it's a vibrant coming of age story about a teen girl navigating love, identity, identity, fucking it, identity and grief as she immerses herself in roller derby. Next we have Love and Other Disasters by Misa Segura. This is again, young adult contemporary. And I believe this is, yeah, this is a romance, female, female romance, I think. Yes, there's the fake dating summer romance fake dating trope <laughs> next we have the mirror season by Anne marie mclemore this is young adult magical realism it says it's a retelling but i'm not sure what it's retelling so let me know if you know this is this might be a heavy hitter it's about trauma and healing and the first part of the thing <laughs> I can't fucking talk. why did i think it would be a good idea to film this video as when two teens discover that they were both sexually assaulted at the same party they develop a cautious friendship then we have highly anticipated lost in the neverwoods by aiden thomas who wrote cemetery boys this is a peter pan retelling that is queer apparently it also takes takes place on the small coastal town of astoria which is in oregon which is great and Aiden also lives in Oregon, so I love uh, a local to me author. Next we have The Dead and the Dark by Courtney Gould. This is a YA fantasy paranormal thriller. And this also takes place in Oregon apparently, uh, but some it says something is wrong in Snakebite, Oregon. I don't know if that's a real place. So someone's boyfriend goes missing, there's a haunting, and it's queer. Next we have She's Too Pretty to Burn by Wendy Hurd. This is YA contemporary thriller. It says an electric romance set against a rebel art scene sparks lethal danger for two girls in this expertly plotted YA thriller. For fans of E. Lockhart, Lauren Oliver, and Kara Thomas. I don't know any of those people, but but it's beautiful. It's also inspired by the picture of Dorian Gray, so that could be very interesting, actually. I, I mean, that is a book just full, filled with narcissism, so I wonder if those themes would come through. <laughs> Next is an adult fiction, and that is The Transition Baby by Tori Peters. I read this book, actually. I read this as an edit. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog's paw licking this entire time, but you're welcome for that. It's one of the weirdest books that I've ever read, but I absolutely loved it. It's, I know that Roxane Gay uh, reviewed this and was like, this is uh, gonna be probably a book that's pretty polarizing. And then Tori Peters retweeted that and was like, excellent. <laughs> but it is, I mean, it's like such an, a beautiful deep dive into queer relationships and trans femininity and Listen, I just loved it a lot, so that's all you need to know about it. Then we have First Become Ashes by K.M. Spara, who is a queer and trans author 
who wrote Docile, which came out this year. And I know that Docile was a book that uh, has a lot of, like, talk about a polarizing book. I haven't read it yet, but just the reviews are polarizing. But this is an adult fantasy. It says, The Fellowship raised Lark to kill monsters. His partner betrayed them to the feds. But Lark knows his magic is real and he'll do anything to complete his quest. There's always, at least what I can tell from this, uh, from this blurb and the fact that, and what I know about Dociles, there's always kind of a political staple in his writing. Next we have Victories Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anders. There was one review on this that says, I love the diversity of the characters who were from many different parts of the planet and outer space. They always introduce themselves by their name, followed by their pronouns, and their genders, for forms, and languages were all different, but there was a language translator to help communicate easily. So if you like that kind of thing, it kind of reminds me of Becky Chambers' writing as well. It's all usually like diversity in space and the cover is wonderful. Then we have a book called 100 Boyfriends by Brontes Purnell. I don't know anything about this author and I only know that this book is queer. I think it's an adult, I would assume. It's a revelatory spiral into the imperfect lives of queer men desperately fighting and often losing the urge to self-sabotage. Next is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, who wrote Red, White, and Royal Blue. This is a non-binary author, and this is an adult contemporary romance retelling of Kate and Leopold, which I think is like a movie, maybe, from like the 90s? I don't know. <laughs> but it's sapphic, and that's just great. Next we have The Witch King by H.E. Edgman. This is another trans author. This looks so fucking cute. There's a trans main character who is a witch and who needs to save the Fae Kingdom. The next book is Yes Daddy by Jonathan Parks Ramage. Ramash. Ram. Rama. <laughs> follows an ambitious young man who is lured by older, an older successful playwright into a dizzying world of wealth in an idyllic Hamptons where, home where things take a nightmarish turn. <laughs> this sounds so spooky and good. It kind of is giving me a little bit of luster vibes, just the idea of like going into a, someone who's like so economically different than you and how that can be really fucking scary because rich people are scary. <laughs> Next is actually an anthology and it's called Mouths of Rain, an anthology of black lesbian thought. This is edited by Brianna Simone Jones and it is about African-American or it's compiled from African-American lesbian writers and theorists. I don't know who all of the contributors are to this critiques on capitalism, heterosexism, and heteropatriarchy. So, you know, I always have like a little bit of worry that this is going to be trans exclusionary, but hopefully it won't be. Next on the list, <laughs> Rise to the Sun by Leah Johnson, another contemporary YA romance between two black girls and a one life-changing music festival. Remember when that was a thing? <laughs> then we have Hana and Ishii's Guide to Fake Dating. This is um, written by a Bangladeshi author. Another YA contemporary romance. And this is uh, obviously fake dating trope. So that one of the girls can prove that she is bi. Her friends are invalidating her as bisexual because they say she can't be bi if she only dates guys. So she gets into a fake relationship with a girl named Ishu. And that sounds really cute and fun. Next we have Indestructible Object by Mary McCoy, young adult contemporary romance. There's a lot of those coming out. And this is perfect for fans of What If It's Us by Mary H.K. Choi. And this is a stunning coming-of-age novel about a girl who loses her job at a as a sound tech at a local coffee shop and she runs a podcast with her boy, boyfriend at the time who then breaks up with her 
over the podcast. But hopefully, assumedly, that will turn into, you know, the gay realization. <laughs> Next we have The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schreffer. This, is this a debut? Nope, definitely not. But this is written by a trans author, and we have two boys alone in space. Need I say more? Next is The Sea of Salt and So Am I. This is YA contemporary uh, drama, maybe? About a 16-year-old named Harlow Prout who is determined to save her small town from falling into the sea from hurricanes. Broken relationships, depression, secrets, longing, yearning, queerness. It is In the Quick, which is about a young ambitious female astronaut's life that is appended by a fiery love affair that threatens the rescue of a lost crew wow in the tradition of station 11 and the martian i know that those are both highly beloved books by this community oh this is adult sci-fi by the way this is we play ourselves by jen silverman and i keep thinking this says <laughs> we play with ourselves but it doesn't adult contemporary that follows a queer feminist reimagining her life after public shaming and moves to Los Angeles to reinvent herself. Where she meets her next door neighbor Caroline, a filmmaker. Oh, they are subjects of Caroline's next semi-documentary semi movie which follows the Girls' Violent Fight Club, a real-life feminist repurposing of the classic. That sounds good in itself. She should have just wrote that. <laughs> Next is Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez, a young adult contemporary romance that is a love triangle with a bisexual main character. Next is May the Best Man Win by Z.R. Elor, male male, and I believe there is a a trans boy in the first line. A trans boy uh, uh, who enters a throwdown battle for the title of Homecoming King with the boy he dumped last summer. Wow. There's also football, cheerleading, if you're interested in that. Next we have a YA fantasy called A Dark and Hollow Star. This is going to be the first in a Dark and Hollow Star series. Just the first sentence says, the iron-born half-fey outcast of her royal fey family attempts tempestuous fury, exiled to earth from the immortal realm and hellbent on revenge. Cool. Uh, four queer teens each hold a key piece of the truth behind some murders. Then we have Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman coming out. This is the continuation of Nick and Charlie. This is also completely free online uh, to read, but she has been condensing them into volumes and yeah, fourth one is coming out. I guess that was one of the sequels that I had on here. Then we have The Ghost We Keep by Mason Beaver, who wrote, don't tell me, I wish you all the best, which was about a non-binary teen. And this is a story about grief but also a story about why we live and about moving on. And there is a um, trans main character, maybe non-binary, I don't know, learning how to face the world without his brother who dies in a car crash. Next is Darling by Kay Ingram, who wrote many things. Oh, well, The Weight of the Stars and The Wicker King specifically. And this is a queer intersex author. And this is another Peter Pan retelling. Can you believe it? Another queer Peter Pan retelling by another excellent fucking author. <laughs> yeah, this is categorized under YA fantasy retelling, but also so mystery thriller. Then we have Bedazzled by Ryan Lasala, who wrote Reverie that came out I think the beginning of this year and this is an epic queer love story that says project runway goes to comic-con if you know if you follow ryan on twitter we all know that it's going to be just pure queer chaos then we have a another ya contemporary romance called the sky blues by robbie couch 
this is a male male romance it looks really gay and really cute it's about sky baker who is openly gay but lives in a small town and has to ask a his crush to prom within 30 days <laughs> why am i crying <laughs> then we have can't take that away by steven salvatore this is a, about a genderqueer teen who dreams of being a diva like their hero, Mariah Carey. Stop. <laughs> All of these... <laughs> I can't handle queer YA. It just makes me cry. This is a YA fantasy called This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. And is... Orphaned and forced to serve her country's ruling group of scribes, Karis wants nothing more than to find her brother long ago shipped away. This is about family bonds, magic, nation, national conflicts, something called the Scriptorium. Next is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Why a historical fiction about two women who f fall in love with each other it takes place in America in 1954, which is not a safe place for two girls to fall in love, especially not in Chinatown. Something about the Red Scare. Next is Follow Your Arrow by Jessica Verdi. Again, for fans of Becky Alberta Albertalli and Adam Silva Silvera, apparently they're just the, the queer icons of the YA community. But this is about C.C. Ross and her girlfriend who are social media influencers with zillions of fans and followers known for their cute outfits and being hashtag relationship goals that is just asking for some tension next so we have between perfect and real by ray stove this is a ya contemporary romance between a trans guy Maybe it's not, I don't know. It's just a story about a trans guy and who everyone thought was a lesbian, including his girlfriend, Zoe, and his theater director who just cast him as a non-traditional Romeo, but he is struggling with deciding whether or not he should come out in high school or wait until college. Next is another anthology that I'm very excited about. This is Transgalactic Bike Ride, and I know that this is also through a Portland publishing company. There's sci-fi anthologies about what the future would look like if we weren't so hung up on putting people into boxes and instead empowered each other to reach for the stars. Take a ride with us as we explore a future where trans and non-binary people are heroes. Love to see it. Next is Girls at the Edge of the World, which will be the beginning of a series, but we don't know the name of the series yet. This is by Laura Brooke Robson, set in a world on the edge of an apocryphal flood. This heart-stoppingly romantic fantasy debut is perfect for fans of Har Rachel Hartman and Ray Carson. Okay, so we have a flood, an aerial silk performer, a prince, Nikolai, and it's queer. And the author's blurb is, I read about snarky girls and climate peril. So, what an intersection. Then we have She Who Became the Sun uh, by Shelley Parker Chan. This is the first in the Radiant Emp Emperor series. It says Mulan meets Song of Achilles. I'm so mad because I just sent an art request to tour and I forgot to include this one. So I need to make sure that I go back and do it. But it is historical fantasy. It's queer. Written by an Australian Asian former diplomat. Cool. Focus on human rights and LGBT advocation, yes. Next is In Deeper Waters by F.T. Lucan. A young adult fantasy that has to do with pirates and a young prince who must rely on a mysterious stranger to save him when he when he is kidnapped during his coming of age tour in this swoony adventure. Ah, I love gay pirates. Who the hell doesn't? Next is The Unbroken, which will be the first in the Magic of the Lost series by C.L. Clark. This is adult fantasy. 
and it is a political fantasy unlike any other about a soldier who is stolen and raised to kill and die for the empire so cl clark did a answered like a question on goodreads and it says the world is a queer normal world the lead women characters are queer there are other lesbian gay and bi characters there's also a trans side character but he won't get significant screen time until book two next we have gear breakers by zoe hannah Makuta. this is a ya sci-fi fantasy two girls on opposite sides of a war discover they're fighting for a common purpose and fall for each other fucking hell yeah they do next is under the whispering door by tj clune this is adult fantasy romance paranormal male male romance everything tj clune writes is queer this is specifically about a ghost who refuses to cross over and the fairy man he falls in love with stop stop we're back had to take a quick pop tart and pee break next on the list of pop tart on my face the jasmine throne which would be the first in the burning kingdoms series this is adult fantasy this is actually going to be a new trilogy set in a world inspired by the history and epics of india written by a tasha suri who is indian it's a vengeful princess there's a maid servant imprisoned by her dictator brother malini spends her days in isolation in the hirana an ancient temple that was once a source of power but is now a decaying ruin then we have winter's orbit by everina maxwell this is adult sci-fi romance and sillery and killery and sillery justice meets red white and royal blue and this is about the Eastcott empire that has long dominated the system through treaties and political alliances planets including oh, but tragedy befalls and there's a death a prince Oh, and an, an unlikely pair must overcome their misgivings and learn to trust each other as they fall in love. Next is These Feathered Flames, which is by Alexandra Overy. Overy. Over. This is going to be part of a series, and it is Queer Own Voices Retelling of the Firebird, which is a Russian folktale. Next is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. This is a... Debut fantasy, perfect for fans of Sorcery of Thorns and Girls of Paper and Fire. A witch cursed to never love meets a girl hiding in her own dangerous magic. And the two strike a dangerous bargain to save their queendom. Next is Ace of Spades by Farida Ibike Yimide. This is a debut novel. It is a contemporary YA thriller about... Oh! Um, with shocking twists that delves deep into the heart of institutionalized racism. Which, uh, we love to see that topic be explored in YA. That's incredible. Next is Fireheart Tiger by Elliot de Bodord. This is a an adult fantasy novella that is compared to Nevo and Sean McGuire. So... This reads like the Goblin Empire meets Howl's Moving Castle in a pre-colonial Vietnamese-esque world. Then we have Malice by Heather Walter, which is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty, but it's queer. <laughs> Next we have Tide Song by Wendy Chu, who wrote Mooncakes, which is one of my favorite graphic novels. This is going to be another graphic novel about an ambitious 12 year old who moves to a seaside town with her aunts for an apprenticeship in magic and then realizes that it may be more than she bargained for this is another one i don't know what the queer rep is but when wendy chu is someone who always includes queerness in her works next we have all of us villains which will be the start of a new series by amanda foodie and uh, this is you fell in love with the victors of the hunger games now prepare to meet the villains of the blood veil next is the velocity of revolution by marshall ryan mariska i haven't read anything by this author but there is there are a lot in his backlist new diesel punk fantasy novel that explores a chaotic city on the verge of revolution 
I don't know what diesel punk is, but that sounds kind of tight. Cause I mean like motorcycle related. Next we have a middle grade, which is called the princess and the grilled cheese sandwich by Dea Muniz. And this is, okay, I'm gonna cry if I talk about this book, but <laughs> this is um, about Lady Camembert, Camembert, a denizen of the kingdom of Fromage, must disguise herself as a man in order to inherit her father's estate, but her secret becomes difficult to keep when she falls in love with the royal princess, Brie. Cheese puns and it's gay. <laughs> Next is She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quinlan, again, another YA contemporary romance. Look at this. Look at this cover. This is a high school nemesis, nemeses to lovers. I mean, I don't know if lovers, but high school nemesis, nemeses fall in love. And one, I assume, is a cheerleader and one is a basketball player. And that's fucking cute. This is another YA contemporary retelling of Thelma and Louise, okay? A queer YA reimagining re of Thelma and Louise with the aesthetic of Riverdale for fans of Mindy McGinnis, Courtney Summers, and Rory Power. Uh, okay, hi. I somehow managed to completely forget the last five books so love that for me you're just gonna get it from my couch we have a lesson in vengeance by victoria lee sapphic dark academia apparently for fans of wilder girls and the ninth house comes a dark twisty atmospheric thriller about a boarding school haunted by its own history of witchcraft then we have the unpopular vote by jasper sanchez this, I believe, has a non-binary main character, but it's all about everything Mark learned about politics he learned from his father, the congressman, who still pretends he has a daughter and not a son. So I guess it's a trans main character. Contemporary young adult, yes. Then we have We Are Watching Eliza Bright by A.E. Osworth, another trans author about a video game coders coder whose private life becomes public and the toxic masculinity and chauvinism that pervades the work her workplace and industry next is my last sequel which is the scratch daughters which is going to be the second book of escape gracers which is on my december tbr and this is by hannah abigail clark another non-binary author this is about witches and hexes and queerness and then we have Earth Reclaimed by Sarah Coder, which is about a non-binary 17-year-old who becomes an ambassador and is forced to face their greatest fear, magic. By drawing powers from rivers and lakes, Saren is left vulnerable by being controlled by the Mother Earth. That's a super interesting take on magic. That is YA fantasy. And that is also officially the last book on this those are all of the books that i have on the list so far if you know of any that i missed please let me know and i will add them to that list as well i'll probably just continue to add them um as i find out about more maybe i'll even do a part two if i find out about a lot more who knows but let me know if you're excited for any of these books in particular and yeah, be sure to check out that Goodreads if you're on Goodreads and add the ones that you're interested. Pre-order books when you can. That really helps out authors, especially queer authors in this industry and is just a wonderful thing to do. Support your indie bookstores. Go team, we, f we fucking did it. Okay, thank you for watching, bye.